In a previous video, we had learned about precompositing, and we had used precompositing to collapse several layers into one single layer. The process of precompositing allows us to do two things. Collapse all of these layers into one single layer so that all layers inside, it's almost like a grouping of layers, sim similar to the way you group layers in Photoshop, or in order to reverse the order in which rendering happens in After Effects, which you, sh you saw with the example I gave during that module. Now, there is an, another use or another utility for precompositing, which uh, is often not used, uh, or it's not one of the main reasons for using it, but it's available, and that is to make all of the layers obey one single layer. That is almost to make them all behave like one. And so that is one way to do this. But the most efficient workflow to, do, uh, to control the motion of several layers or one layer to another is by parenting. Now, parenting is the, is the process by which we make uh, an, an object or a, a layer the controller of another layer or of other several layers, depending on how you want to set up that hierarchy. So this hierarchy basically uh, uh, lays out the flow in which items are animated based on a parenting basis. So you have a parent that controls children or a parent that controls a child, and that child can be the parent of yet another layer. So let me go ahead and import a file into this composition so we can work on uh, an example. So let's go ahead and import this file, and I'm going to import that Photoshop file as composition retain layer sizes. And notice that in this case, it gives me a new notification saying you're about to import it, but you have editable uh, layer styles within those layers in Photoshop. Do you want to keep them as editable inside After Effects or you want to merge them? If you want to make changes to the styles, you can keep them as editable. It, it increases your rendering time if you do that. If you want to merge them, it basically flattens the pixel information as is from the Photoshop file. And if you took the time to apply those the styles in Photoshop, chances are that you want to maintain maintain them as you created them in Photoshop. So you, in my case, I always merge my styles. Or if I don't, if I want to apply styles, I bring my items without styles from Photoshop and Illustrator and, and apply them within After Effects. So I'm just simply going to merge them in this case into the footage. Uh, and so that they're flattened files, and then I'm going to click OK. So with that done, a new composition opens up and a folder with the layers that belong to that composition. Now, let me go ahead and double click on that folder so we can, on that uh, composition, so we can see what this is. And you can see there's something called a frame layer, and then there's a big arm layer, then there's a medium arm layer, and a small arm. Think of this as your body. Where your body goes, the entirety of your arm goes. Where your uh, um, upper arm goes, your forearm and your hand go. Where your forearm goes, your hand goes. So if you think of it that way, that's the hierarchy that you will be creating in this file. So for this, I am going to set my anchor point for each one of these layers where the pivot points would be for these arms. So in this case, I'm going to simply switch my tool to the pan behind tool, which is this tool right here. And then I'm going to move the anchor point for each one of the layers to its pivot point. I'm going to drag them to that pivot point. And then the next thing I want to do is I want to start thinking of the hierarchy. As I said before, if I think of this as my body, the big portion of it, which is the controller of everything, would be the frame. That's the, that's the parent. In After Effects, to, parent and to, to create parenting between uh, layers, the child points to the parent. In this case, the big arm will point to the frame. The medium arm will point to the big arm, and the small arm will point to the medium arm. That's the hierarchy that I want to create, almost like my arm in my body. So how do I do that? If you don't have your parent and link column open, right-click anywhere on that gray area, on that gray bar where the name, layer name, and the switches icons are for your layers, right-click so that you open up the columns drop-down menu. And from the drop-down menu, select the parent link option, parent and link. Now you can go ahead and like I said before, the child selects the parent. So in this case, the big arm will be a child of the frame. Therefore, I can use this pick whip to select the frame. And you'll notice that nothing happens here. But when I go move, let me switch my tool back to my arrow tool. When I move my frame, my big arm goes along with it. If I make the medium a child of the big arm following the same process, now, both when I move the frame, both the medium and the big arm move along. The other way to select 
uh, apparent is from the drop down menu. So in this case, I'm, for this for the small arm, I'm going to make that a child of the medium arm. And so I'm going to choose instead of pick whipping, I am going to be using the, the drop down menu and I'm going to choose medium arm from that option. So now when I move the frame, all of the different parts of the arm move along with it. Now, this is extremely useful because now I can move those independently if I want to, because they're all children of the of the of the frame, but and they will move when the frame moves, but I they retain their own control. So in a case like this, what I want to do, for example, is I want to fold that arm into its uh, on its own. So I want to go ahead and open up rotation values for all three layers on that arm. So I'm going to select them and press the R key. And the first one, the big arm, I'm going to rotate to 45 degree 45 degree angle. Then on the medium, I'm going to rotate it negative 180. And for the small arm, I'm going to rotate it to positive 180. So you notice that I collapsed the arm onto itself. I'm going to set keyframes for all three of these. And then I am going to go to the two second mark and I am going to expand everything back to zero. So I'm going to go set value of zero for that for all of them. And you'll notice that basically this uncollapses the arm because all values where this one goes from 45 to zero, this one goes from negative 180 to zero, and this one goes from positive 180 to zero. That's how the arm is uncollapsing. Now, if I decide to move my frame, let's say, for example, I set keyframe uh, positions for uh, position keyframes for that frame, I'm going to start, start at this point, and I'm just going to move it slightly to the right, nothing fantastic. So when I do that, you will notice that the rotation values re is retained, the, nothing happens, it doesn't get distorted, and it it is controlled by the parent. So this is how you would create that parenting hierarchy in order for different layers to obey a parent. Now, this is also useful when we're talking about uh, affecting only properties of that of, of these layers. So we can we right now we simply connected layer to layer, but you can also connect layer to, uh, I mean, sorry, uh, property to property between layers. So let's go back to this composition that you saw when I opened up the program. And I'm going to use a, um, a null object for making this parenting setup. So what, what is a null object? A null object you find under layer, new, null object. A null object is basically an empty rectangle. This null object is basically a helper. It does not render, meaning you won't see that rectangle in your final video. It's invisible for all intents and purposes, but it contains all of the properties of any layer. So that means that you can apply anything you want to that helper, to that null object. And if you parent that to a child, then the child receives all that information as well. So how does that work? Well, let's take a look at this. I want to rotate the moon based on the rotation of that null object. So if I go ahead and make the, the, the moon rotation only, let's open up its rotation and the null rotation only. If I, you'll notice that for any of these properties, if I open up the properties, they all have pick whips of their own. So if I open up the rotation only, I see the pick whip for the rotation value only, I can pick whip the rotation to the rotation of the null object. And if I do so, you'll notice that the numbers get red which means I have applied some sort of scripting to this, and you will see that in just a second. Uh, but you'll notice now that if I set up keyframes for my null object for rotation, let's say I want to rotate it a couple of times in two seconds, you will notice that as my null object rotates, so does the moon. So that moon is obeying the rotation values of the null object. However, if I move my null object, let's set up position keyframes for the null object, let me move it here. You will notice that even though it is rotating, I mean, even though it is moving, it does not, the moon doesn't move from where it's at because the position value that has been applied to that, to that, uh, the, the, the connection between the moon layer and the null object, it's only on the rotation level, nothing else. So the position change did not affect the, the, the moon rotation or the moon position in this case. Now, it is important to know where you start applying that parenting. So let us let me undo this really quick until I don't see any, any value applied to that rotation for the moon. And what I want to do is I want to actually pre-create uh, rotation values for the null object. So I want to, and I want to do two things. I want to move my null object to this corner. I want to apply 
a rotation value to it to start at this point. And then let's say I want to go ahead and apply a rotation value of one, one rotation at two. One rotation, whoops. Or actually, let's just go ahead and do uh, 90 degrees or 180 degrees in the middle and going back to the very beginning again. So I have three three uh, keyframes. So you'll notice that the rotation is kind of like a bouncing rotation. It's sort of like a pendulum. Okay, so that's the rotation that I want my moon to follow. Now, if I apply the rotation value of it right now, if I connect the rotation to the rotation of that object, watch what happens. It will rotate and come back. And that's because my time marker was at the very beginning, as you saw. It was right here before I applied it. Now, let me undo that and then go to the one second mark where this thing has already rotated halfway. And then I'm going to apply the rotation at that point. What happens is now you'll notice that my moon reverses its course, as you can see. And that also, it, it's more significant when you see it when instead of doing the rotation only, I actually connect the layers. Watch what happens. If I move this back, you'll notice that it changes the position of my moon when I move it back. Then it goes to the position where it's at at the middle, and then it goes back to somewhere out here. So based on the position of the time marker, when I connect the layers at the layer level, meaning I make a layer completely a child of the parent, then that's when that, that change takes effect. So if I start my connection at the one second mark, which is halfway through my animation, then it's going to take that into account when it connects them. And so you might end up with the wrong results. If this happens to you, know that that's because you are using, you're placing your time marker at the wrong place. This is also helpful if you actually intend it to be that way, if you want to make use of that uh, animation, or I mean, of, that, of, the, of the settings based on the uh, changes that you have applied to the null object in this case. Now, another thing that you can do here is you can actually connect and make the moon position and uh, inherit all of the values of that null object, making the moon move to where the null object is, if that's something that you, in, that, if that's your intention. So, how do you do that? You press the Alt key or the Shift key on the keyboard while you're dragging this pick whip to the null object. You'll notice that the moon got moved to that position and it got increased. Why? Because the scaling value for my null object is 100%. But my scaling value for the moon originally was 40%. I had scaled it down. So it was 40%, but when I when I Shift drag the actual, oh, sorry, Shift drag the pick whip, to the null object, it inherited all of the values of the null object. And as you can see, it rotates because the null object is rotating and it moved to its position and it went to the scale. So all of the values of the null object are now the values of the moon. So if, of, if I increase or decrease the scale value or if I change the position of the null object, the moon will follow. So that is the how detailed this parenting can be if you want to take advantage of the utilities of using something like a uh, like a, a null object to transform things. Now, this is extremely helpful. For example, say if I have an animation already in place, let's say I just did what, what the connection is between these things. And so I, what I want to do is I want to go ahead and make animations for this. So I want to move this all of these clouds around. So I'm going to go ahead and set position keyframes for all of them, and I'm going to move them over two seconds. So I'm going to go ahead and move this one here, this one here, this one here, and this one here. So I have motion of those clouds. But it turns out that that's not where I want the clouds to be. Okay. So let me remove the rotation values for that uh, null object. And if I, I want to move all of those clouds at the same time, but I really want the clouds below the moon. That's where I want them. I don't want them at the top. So how would I go about moving all of those clouds without having to move each one of them at a time because they already have positions, position keyframes set up? Well, all I have to do is just make them children, select them all, and make them children of the null object. Now, if I move the null object down, all of them move down, but they retain their own animation. So that does not get affected. And then once I have them set up where I need them, I can just go ahead and make them remove the child-parent relationship and they will remain at the bottom and they won't be controlled by the uh, null object anymore. So if I move that null object up, 
you'll notice that or move it around the clouds are not moving anymore because I have disconnected the parenting so this is also a utility that is extremely useful when you're trying to control several layers and have them maintain their property changes but also be able to control them from one parent object